To this day, the general public is under the impression that running or any form of cardiovascular exercise is healthier than lifting weights. Is this true? Is lifting weights bad for you? Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here, PhD in sports science, tackling the idea that lifting weights might be bad for you. What spurred this video was the publication of a new paper on the relationship between how long you spend lifting weights on a given week and your risk of all-cause mortality. Just like mama used to tell me, all this lifting isn't good for you. And that's actually the name of the author of the study. What did they find? Well, in this meta-analysis, they included 16 prospective cohort studies. Essentially, studies that take a group of individuals and follow them over time, alongside tracking different behaviors they perform, and see which ones end up dying and which ones don't. When combining all 16 of these studies, they had hundreds of thousands of participants in this study. Let's break down the results. First, when you compared participants who performed some lifting to participants who didn't do anything physically active, the ones who lifted had a lower risk of dying via all-cause mortality, had a lower risk of getting diabetes, a lower risk of cancer, and a lower risk of cardiovascular disease. We're talking about a reduction in risk of about 15 to 20 percent. However, here's where it gets interesting. They also did a meta-regression to see how the risk of all-cause mortality, cancer, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease changed as the amount of lifting participants did per week changed. Essentially, they were asking the question of, is there an optimal amount of time spent lifting weights in a given week that will minimize your risk of being in poor health? And to make a long story short, yes, there was. However, that amount was far lower than you might expect. And in fact, the best benefits were seen between 30 to 60 minutes of lifting per week. The exception here was diabetes risk, where more lifting did seem to be better. However, for all-cause mortality risk, essentially your likelihood of dying, cardiovascular disease, and cancer, past about 30 to 60 minutes of lifting per week, your risk actually started increasing again. And by the time you got to about two hours of lifting a week, your risk was actually the same as if you didn't lift at all. And past about two hours a week, your risk actually went up in terms of dying, in terms of getting cancer, and in terms of cardiovascular disease. In other words, if you're spending more than about two and a half, two hours a week lifting, your risk of getting cancer, cardiovascular disease, and dying is higher than if you didn't lift at all. In case you couldn't tell from my facial expression, I am a little bit skeptical or surprised by these results. Interestingly, when the authors then considered not just participants who just lifted, but participants who specifically lifted and performed aerobic exercise, which by the way includes things like walking, so we're not talking about intense cardio here, the reduction in risk to things like cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and all-cause mortality actually increased by quite a bit. Now you often saw reductions of 40 to maybe even 50%. So what's the deal with lifting increasing your odds of dying essentially past around a couple hours a week? Well, let me mention a quick limitation of the study. And that's that this study included mostly older subjects. So whether or not this generalizes to you, young whippersnapper, lifting your weights a few times a week, trying to get jacked, not entirely clear. With that being said, this isn't actually an isolated finding. This has been found in a previous meta-analysis as well. There are potential confounders that aren't accounted for, right? For example, people are generally unlikely to report that they take PEDs, right? It's just not something people like to report. And so in these studies, the participants who spend more time lifting each week presumably are also the ones more serious about lifting, who may also be taking PEDs and yet not report it. And since PEDs, uh, aka steroids, are well known to impact health in negative ways, it could be the idea that, hey, the participants who lifted for a lot of time in these studies, they're also the ones who took steroids and therefore had worse health as a result of the steroids, not as a result of lifting for more time each week. And there are probably other confounders that could explain this. And this brings me to the examples of many younger lifters in the fitness industry passing away early. For example, let's talk about Ziz, right? He passed away at a very early age. Likewise, more recently, Dallas McCarver, Joe Lindner. While these are anecdotes, and I'm not claiming that they make a broader point about whether or not lifting makes you die, and these were also people on PEDs, these tragic deaths do hit me a bit differently in light of this research, you know? With that being said, I want to come back to the research on whether or not lifting is actually bad for you above a certain dose. Because one thing that isn't really being explained here is what the mechanism might be. Ultimately, the outcome is what we care about the most, and if we have sufficient evidence of the outcome occurring, then that can be sufficient. But in this case, we only have a few papers. So, knowing whether the mechanism is clear might be helpful. One of these papers suggested that resistance training above a certain amount 
might make your health worse by adversely impacting your heart rate, your blood pressure, or even your arterial stiffness. Indeed, one study, for example, compared the arterial stiffness of a group that didn't do any exercise to a group that performed consistent lifting week to week. Why is arterial stiffness or arterial compliance a marker of health? Well, reductions in the compliance of central arteries exert a number of adverse effects on cardiovascular function and disease risk. In this study, the group that was lifting actually saw a reduction in the compliance of their carotid artery of about 20%. Likewise, when it comes to heart rate and blood pressure, there was a study by Lamotte and colleagues. They compared a lower volume approach of lifting lighter weights for more reps to lifting heavier weights for fewer reps. This doesn't really tell us anything about duration of lifting per week, but it is a comparison of lower and higher volumes, I guess. They found that after lifting, systemic blood pressure and heart rate increased to a larger extent with higher reps, which the authors of this previous meta-analysis used as evidence alongside the previous study on compliance to suggest that maybe lifting above a certain amount with a high volume causes negative health adaptations. With that said, a short-lived acute increase in your systolic blood pressure and heart rate shouldn't necessarily result in any long-term complications with your health. That said, the mechanisms as to why too much lifting could worsen your health are still pretty unclear. So I'm not really willing to say just yet that too much lifting is going to have you walking to an early grave. So much past about an hour of lifting a week doesn't actually seem to benefit your health any further. What you may not know is that the same is kind of true for cardiovascular exercise, like running for example. A recent meta-analysis actually found that the maximum benefit of moderate physical activity, which includes things like walking for example, was had with around 5 to 10 hours of walking or any other physical activity that is moderate in intensity per week. So just 5 to 10 hours is going to be sufficient in maximizing your health. What about more intense cardio like running? Well in that case it's actually even much lower around one to four hours per week is sufficient to maximize your adaptations. However, while this is sufficient to optimize your health, and there is a plateau after this point, in contrast to lifting, you don't have an increase in risk if you go too high. At the very least, that wasn't evident in this meta-analysis. There are complications associated with being, for example, an elite endurance athlete, but that's outside the scope of this video. At least when just looking at behaviors, aka how much cardiovascular exercise you do per week, that increase in risk when you do too much wasn't apparent here. However, for both lifting and cardiovascular exercise, it seems like you can get most, if not all, of the benefit with pretty low doses. Around an hour of lifting a week and only a couple hours of cardiovascular exercise a week too. My personal takeaway from this research on lifting and how it impacts your risk of dying and overall health is this. If someone comes to me and wants to maximize their health and they ask, hey, should I lift and how long should I lift for? I say, you should lift. However, I would say start with around an hour a week. Based on the research, that's going to roughly maximize your health. And much more than this, I'm not sure will improve your health any further and just might make it worse. I don't think we have the evidence to clearly say that's the case yet, and we certainly don't have an understanding of the mechanisms involved, which makes me a bit more skeptical, but the evidence is leaning in that direction. And importantly, the same broad message of a low dose is actually best for your health is true for both lifting and for cardio. You don't need to do a ton to get a great health benefit. That is the video. If you enjoyed the video, please comment, like, subscribe, leave a comment down below if there's anything else you want to see me break down. If you'd like me to take care of your training nutrition for you, consider applying for coaching somewhere above. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day and I will see you guys in that next one. Peace.